This is how to collect data about your users without doing things that should make them hate you. It's about the randomized response method. Thank you. <laughs> this is my title slide because I didn't know they'd provide me with a title slide. But there you go. So, I suspect, this being the scale audience, there will be some of you who are a bit uneasy about the amount of data that's collected about you by companies. There'll be people in this room, people in this building, people in this country who are a bit upset, a bit worried about this kind of thing. I am one of them. But importantly, we want people to be data driven. Right? We don't want companies to make guesses about us and get it wrong. We absolutely want them to collect data and act on it. So, pick an example. This is a thing from the 1960s. If you want to work out whether people have smoked marijuana, you can't just ask them, have you done this in a survey? Because they'll all say no, because they assume the police are going to come and kick down the door, put them in prison, because it's illegal. So it's very difficult to get decent data responses from things where people have a motive to tell you lies about the answers. So, if you are a clever so social science researcher in the 1960s, you come up with a thing called the randomized response method. So what you do is you ask them the question, then you tell them, flip a coin. And then if the coin comes up head, you tell the truth about your answer. If the coin comes up tails, you tell a lie about the answer. So if you have smoked dope and your coin comes up tails, you say, no, I haven't. And the whole point of this, the beauty of this, is that the errors kind of cancel out, which means that if you're in a position where 20% of people have smoked dope, when you do this, 20% of people will, in your survey, say they have, but any one individual person's answer is not incriminating. So if the cops come and kick down the door and say, you wrote on a bit of paper that you did this illegal thing, you say, nah, I flipped tails on my coin, and so I'm safe. Right? So any one individual person's answer does not incriminate them, but you, the company, the surveyor, the government, whatever, still get roughly accurate answers. So imagine you want to, you're building a service and you want to get a sense of the age of the users of your service. Right? So you ask them, are you 18 to 24, 24 to 35, 35 to 45, whatever. And if you look at these graphs, the, the first one is if you tell people, almost all of you should tell the truth. The second one is if you say half of you should lie about your answer. That third one, every single person lied about what age they were. But you can see the graph still roughly the same shape. And you, if you are a developer or you're a manager of developers, implementing this in your software is trivial. Anytime you want to collect information from one of your users, just with a certain percentage chance, make, them, make that answer different. Have it so they told a lie. The user doesn't even need to know you've done it. And you're collecting data which does not compromise that user. It can't be used against them. And the key point here is it lets you tune how much you protect user data versus your business needs. Because at the moment, we present people with the option of you have all your data collected or you opt out of the internet. And you shouldn't have to opt out of the internet. We have superpowers. I can command any music I want. My daughter, who's 20, has never known the experience of being lost. And that's amazing. We should not be asked to give that up. And so we, as companies, as developers, we can trade on this. You can stand there and say, we protect our data in a way that our competitors don't. And what that does is it opens up the idea, the critical idea that real people out there in the world become aware there's a third way. There's some compromise between opting out of Facebook entirely or having all your data collected for nefarious purposes. And that normalizes the idea that this is a reasonable thing to ask for, to demand of the services you use and the products that you use and the companies that you use. And we can make that difference. Making a big change to the way the industry works is hard, but changing every small question that your app asks to store slightly unreliable data makes this data protection thing happen for your users, but doesn't compromise your ability as a company to be data-driven, to make proper decisions. So, 
My name's Stuart Langridge. If you're interested in talking to me more about this, I'll be in a pub somewhere at some point, or I'm doing a talk tomorrow, or I'm at SIL on Twitter, so if you want me to come and talk to your company, give me a shout. And that's me. Thank you very much. We confiscate those after. Um. Keeping my phone. <laughs>